All right. So we've been uh, we're looking at BCH codes. I should tell you what the expansion is. B stands for both. C for Chaudhary. And H for Okay. So, so what is the main idea in BCH code? The main idea is you define a parity check matrix. So what? Uh, GF2 para. Okay. Right? So you define a parity check matrix over GF2 param. So that's the crucial idea. What what it, what advantage it gives you is in GF2 param you have several elements for which you can take powers and get some non-trivial things. So essentially that is the core idea, right? So you have alpha which is a primitive element of element of order n, and then you can look at its square, its cube, its up to some d minus one for some non-trivial d you can do that and still you will get distinct nice elements. In binary and all, you have no such notion. You right? need some notion like that to help you, and that's what this does. This, this does. Okay, so once you have those elements, you can put it together in like the form I had for you. So what is the idea here? So you have to find an element beta in GF2 para, order of beta, let's say it's greater than or equal to n, and then you define your parity check matrix in this form. Okay, so if you want b is the desired distance. Uh, define minimum distance. Okay, somebody tells you I want a minimum distance of b. Then what do you do? First row you put one beta beta square all the way to beta power minus one. And in the second row you put one beta square beta square square all the way to beta square power one minus one. All the way down to you to go down to what? B minus one. Okay, so that's important. and that gives you a parity check matrix. Okay. So the only problem here is now you are not going to allow your code words. Okay, so one way of getting a binary code. So so okay, so let me rephrase what the question was. Okay, so you define a parity check matrix over some GF2 param, but then you ultimately want a binary code because you're going to be dealing with bits all the time and you want to send bits or receive bits or something in, in a communication application, you want bits. Okay. So then the question is how do you go to bits from GF2 param? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so there are various ways of doing it, but the first step is to define this idea of a subfield subcode. There's also another way of doing it, but this the first method that will method method that we'll see is this subfield subcode idea that gives you the notion of binary BCH codes. Okay, so for binary BCH codes, you let the code be the set of all C in GS2 and such that H times C transpose is 0. Okay. Remember H has elements over over what? CF2 param. Okay. The only reason why this multiplication makes sense, why does H times C transpose make sense? Makes sense because GF2 is is what? Is a proper subfield of GF2 param. Okay, so if, if, if GF2 was not a subfield, then you have no business asking for C from GF2 n. Okay? Because it was a proper subfield of GF2 par n, the multiplication makes sense and you can ask this question. But then there may not be any code word in C. You know, how do you know that there is a there's going to be a code word from with only binary elements which will satisfy this equation? Okay, so of course there's one binary vector which will definitely satisfy this equation. What is that vector? Right? Okay, so you know how zero is there. How do you know that there is anything more? Okay, so you have to worry about that. So in other words, you have to find out the dimension of this code, of this binary code. Okay. So the non-binary code, if I say if I define a non-binary code with this, not necessarily binary, if I say my code words can be from GF2 par M, finding the dimension is easy. What would you do for finding the dimension? What would I do? I have to find the rank of this matrix, right? So what is the rank of this matrix? D minus one, right? So if D is small enough, so on this point in cases, it's going to be D minus one. Okay. So rank is D minus one. I showed you how any D minus one column is linearly independent. So it's just take any D minus one column that's going to be linearly independent. So rank is going to be D minus one. It cannot be D, right? Why can't the rank be D? There is only D minus one rows, so it cannot be greater than D minus. So it's rank is equal to D minus one. That you can easily see. That's for GF 
2 power n. Okay, so we found n minus k, and from n minus k you can find k very easily. But if you say, if you insist that the code words have to be binary, you cannot use rank arguments. Okay, that works only for the g of 2 power n. Okay, so now you need more arguments. Okay, so you have to somehow convert some equations to binary. Okay, so I'm going to first tell you one direct way of doing it, but it won't give you very nice answers, and then we will use a smarter method which will give you very good answers. Okay, so what is the direct way of doing it? You look at the authority check matrix here. Okay, so when I say H times C transpose is zero, what does it mean? The first row will be the following. Okay, suppose I say C is C1, C2, or maybe C0, C1. Okay, so it's a little bit better if I do that. Now we go to C n minus one. Okay, the first row tells me what? C0 times one plus C1 times C bar plus C2 times beta square all the way to C n minus 1 times beta power n minus 1 should be equal to 0. Okay. So there's a subtle point here which I want to want to emphasize. You have to imagine, see, since you're multiplying the beta, C1 is actually a bit. So now you have to imagine that all these C0, C1s are all belong to GF2 power m. And then the multiplication makes sense. Okay. So that is okay. GF2 power m has a 0 and a 1. And you know it's a proper subfield. You have to close the proper subfield. That's okay. What about this one? Is that the binary one? Okay, so you have to interpret that as the G of two power m one. Okay, so remember that. That's a that's a subtle point there which you should keep in mind. Okay, so if you don't do that, it will not make sense. Because the reason is I'm going to add this to some beta. Okay, only way you can add to beta is if you think of that also as a G of two power m element. Okay, so that is one equation. Okay, the first row gives you one equation in GF2 power n. Okay, you can now convert this into multiple binary equations. Okay, so how do I do that? Okay, I have to use the vector representation for the elements of GF2 power n. Okay, what do I know? I know that GF2 power n has this representation, right? A0 plus A1 alpha plus so on to A1 minus 1 alpha power m minus 1 and a is are binary ok I know this representation ok so what it means is every element here can be written as a m total over g of 2 ok not g of 2 power m so each element has a representation as m m length vector which is binary ok so now I can replace I can replace each of those elements with its m length binary equivalent and I will get m equations which are binary. Okay, so how do I do that? Suppose I say, okay, suppose, so, so for 1 it is very clear, what is the m bit binary representation of 1? 1 followed by all 0. For beta now it is not clear what it will be. So let me say for beta power i, the m bit representation is a0 i plus a1 i alpha plus 1 until a m minus 1 i alpha power m minus 1. Okay, so let's, we can always find these bits and each of these things are belongs to gf2, right? So I can do this. Okay, so let this be so. Okay, so now you use this representation inside that equation. Okay, then what happens? Okay, so is that clear? So for the first time C0 will be C0 times 1, 1 let us keep it as itself. Then C1 will be beta beta power 1. So that would be A01 plus A11 B alpha plus 1 to alpha power and minus 1. Right? And then you would have C2 times Okay, plus one to C n minus one times Is it okay? Equals what? Zero. Okay. So now I can group all the powers of alpha and I will get what? C zero plus what? C1 
a0 of 1 plus c2 a0 of 2 plus 1 of 2 cn minus 1 a0 of 1 minus 1 plus c1 a1 of 1 plus c2 a1 of 2 plus 1 of 2 alpha right i'm just regrouping i'm writing a column wise right so we'll get c1 just i'll write one more expression just for uh just for completeness it's going to be a1 of 2 oh it's not a1 of 2 it's a2 of 1 i'm sorry Okay. Times alpha squared plus one two. The last one will be what? C one a m minus one one. Oh, sorry, sorry. C n minus one a m minus one n minus one. Alpha bar m minus one should be equal to zero. Okay. Right. So 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 what do we have here? So on the right hand side you have zero, and the left hand side you have some other element from. G of two pi m. So what should happen? Each of these factors which multiply one alpha alpha square and all should be zero. So from this one equation, I will be getting m equations which are all binary now. Okay. So remember, each of these things are binary. Okay. So uh, let me write this once again. I had this one equation. I had this one equation which was c zero plus c four times one c one times p bar plus C two times p plus four plus four into C n minus one times p plus four n minus one equals zero. Okay, so this is over G F two power m. I have this one equation. Now what I'm going to do is replace each element of G F two power m by its equivalent m bit binary representation, but in a column. Okay, so I'll put it in a column. Okay, so if I do that, one is what? One followed by zero. So what is the beta? A zero one. A one one, A m minus one one. This is for beta square. A zero two, A one two, A m minus one two. What is it for beta pi n minus one? A zero n minus one, A one n minus one, A m minus one n minus one. Right? Now, what can I do? I can write C transpose, which is C zero C one C n minus one, and that should be equal to how many zeros? Remember, for zero also I have to put its column vector equivalent, and that is m zeros. Okay, so these are m equations over G of. Okay, so that one equation over G of two power m is equivalent to m different equations over. C of two. Okay, so that's a very straightforward result. Okay, so now what I did for the first row, I can do for the for each of the other rows, right? So I have one more row where instead of one beta beta square and all, I have one beta square beta square square so on. Okay, so now each of those elements are again elements of G of two power m. I can once again replace each of them by m bit equivalence. So I'll get m other equations over G of two. Okay, so what I can do is In my big parity check matrix here, over G of two bar m, I can reach replace each element by its m bit equal. If I do that, what kind of a parity check matrix do I get? I get a binary parity check matrix for a binary code, and that is what we are looking for. Okay. So the only problem here was it was a parity check matrix over G of two bar m, but we want your code words to be binary, so you can't use any of the rank ideas. Okay. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to go from G of two pi m parity check matrix to a G of two parity check matrix. How do I do that? I replace each element here by its m bit equivalent column wise. Okay. And equal. Finally, after I do all the replacement, I still have the new matrix times C transpose to be equal to zero. Okay. Now I can use my linear algebra ideas, find the rank of that binary matrix. Okay. And that will be equal to n minus k. And that gives me the dimension. So that can be very nicely carried out. Okay. So the general algorithm for any subfield subcode is that 
Okay, so you look at the parabolic matrix over the higher field, replace each element by its n bit equivalent, and find the rank in binary field of gas. So, okay, any questions? Not d minus one. You can put one to the one after the other. Everything together. No, 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 no. Okay, so I think I can make myself clear. So you replace this row by m equations. You replace this also with another m equations. So each of these you replace by m equations. So you get d minus one times m equations. Okay. So after you do the replacement, the big matrix, binary matrix, will have m times d minus one rows and n columns. Okay, you don't know if all of them are linearly independent. Though. So you have to do elimination. Yes. Yeah, I'll come to. It. I'll come to. It. So she's making a point that all these rows may not be linearly independent. That's true. So you'll see you can quickly rule out some linear dependence. We'll come to it later. But for now, the general method is that. So. The linear dependence comes because of the specific structure of this matrix. If you had a more general matrix, you may not get. It. Yes, sir. Okay. Here, huh? okay. So I'll 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 make some comments on that also. Okay. So when we see, okay. So the question was. Is there a better structure for this paradigmatic matrix directly? I mean, we will come to it soon enough. Okay, so the method I described is definitely not the best method for this specific matrix. For this specific matrix, there are much smarter methods. Like I said, we'll come to the smarter method next. For now, I'm trying to give you a method which is generic for any arbitrary matrix over GF2 parm. The method I'm telling you will work. There's no problem. Okay, so don't worry about the beta, beta square, and all. Okay, so that is for a specific case. For this case, we we have a simplifying method, a very simple method, much simpler method than this. We'll come to that. So, okay, at that point, you you'll get the answer to your question also. So, I think beta square is just useless. Right? It's a additional condition. It's not really needed. Okay, so you, when you only 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 when you go to beta part three, will you get good minimum distance? That's correct. But is this clear? Okay, this is the ready-made. This is the method for generally doing this subfield subcode idea. How do you find the dimension of the subfield subcode? Replace each element column-wise, and then find the rank of them. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's one method. But then let's try to be a little bit smart. Okay, let's try to be a little bit smart and see if we can come up with a more smart way of finding the dimension of the code. Okay, so is there a better method to find the dimension of the code? And that's what I'm going to describe here: dimension of binary PC codes. What is this? But a simple way to view it, and that suddenly will give you a different picture. So what I'm going to do is, I will take a code word. Remember, this is a binary code word belonging to, let's say, this BCH code. Okay, so for notation-wise, I'm always going to fix this as my BCH code. Okay, so this will be my BCH code. Okay, and this will be my parabolic matrix. I'm not going to repeat it every time. Hopefully, you see this. So this is my parabolic matrix always. And that is my BCH code. This is the definition of a BCH code. Okay, so for this BCH code, what I can do is view this code word as a polynomial. Remember, this is GF two n belongs to GF two n. You view it as a polynomial. Why do you view it as a polynomial? It's simply like okay, some x two each by you know, c n minus one x power n minus one. Right? You view it as a polynomial which belongs to GF two. Okay, so it belongs to GF two x, right? So you can do it like that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't change anything. Makes makes no big difference. But now look at the i throw of the parity check matrix. What does it tell you? Tells you c zero times one plus c one times beta par i, c two times beta par i square, so on so. C n minus one times theta par i raised to the power n minus one is zero. Okay, so now you see any connection between this and the polynomial notation? The I throw basically tells you that any code word of my binary BCH code has a root. What is that root? Theta par i. 
tells you. So basically, this tells you the beta par i is the root of c of x. Okay, remember once again, let me emphasize c of x has binary coefficients. Beta par i is an element of g of 2 par n. So what can I say immediately? All the conjugates of beta par i are also roots of the same c of x. Okay? So this one row of h gives you as many roots as the conjugates of beta par i. Okay? For my binary code word c of x. Okay? Right? So this beta par i being a root of c of x is very powerful. Okay? This root is in g of 2 par m and c of x is a binary polynomial. Okay, so you use all your notions of conjugates and you get very, very, very interesting results. So what it means is x plus beta par i divides c of x, right? That we know. This only says beta par i is a root of c of x. But since c of x also has binary coefficients, you know that m beta par i of x, what is m beta par i of x? The minimal polynomial of beta also divides so that's because c of x has binary coefficients. Okay, and this guy has roots equal to the conjugacy class. I mean, uh, the cyclotomic process of beta par i. Okay, so you have to go beta par i, beta par two i. So on. Okay, so you have all those. Things. Yes. No, no, they have nothing to do with the group process. Yeah, not, not in the rigorous sense. No. For one, they're not, they're not all of the same size. Okay, so this is the word cyclotomic is quite important. It has less sense. Okay? They partition the. Okay? Is that clear? So now our BCH code is much clearer. Okay, so C of X belongs to the binary BCH code. So here's a result, which is quite interesting. C of X belongs to the binary BCH code. Okay, what are the parameters for it? Length n, uh, design distance, b b. Okay, and then uh, beta belonging to G of two par m is used in this okay so this belongs to the binary pch code this can only is what happens okay what are all the factors of cfx okay m theta par i of x divides cfx for what i equals 1 to b minus 1 okay so remember okay, this can only is why is it true the other way Otherwise, is obvious. Okay, so if, if each of the m beta y of x divides c of x, clearly all the beta y are, beta i are roots, beta par i are roots. So clearly, h times c transpose will also be zero. Okay, so this is this and only if both ways it's true. Okay, so all the code words are multiples of m beta i of x. Okay, so now from here you can conclude. Okay, so this from this condition you can conclude. Okay, that the LCM because LCM least common multiple of m beta square of x for m, m beta par d minus one of x has to do what? Has to divide c of x. Okay. So remember this is if and only if. Okay. This and only if the LCM of all these things divides c of x, you will get a code word of the binary BCH code. Okay. So now I can write my binary BCH code. As following, okay, multiples of multiples of what? Okay, so let me denote this polynomial as g of x. Okay, the LCM. All multiples of g of x with degree degree what? Less than or equal to n minus one. Okay, is that correct? Okay, remember g of x is a binary polynomial. What have been been binary coefficients, right? Is that correct? That's the important thing. This critical step between from here to here is what? 
here this gate has coefficients from 3 of 2 power n this gate has coefficients from 3 of 2 ok and c of x also has coefficients from g of 2 so we are in very very familiar territory ok when is the code word when 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 you have a code word of the binary bch code when the minimal polynomials of beta power 1 beta power 2 all the way to beta power d minus 1 divides c of x right all these days are binary polynomials so i can immediately conclude that the binary bch code itself basically contains the multiples of multiples of the LCM, okay, not all each of those things, but LCM is what we need, okay, the reason is some of these two things might be the same, okay, so then you can't just multiply them, to so take the LCM, okay, is that clear, so this polynomial has a special name, it's called the generator polynomial for the BCH code, okay, so this guy is called the generator polynomial, okay, so remember let me write this down in <laughs> some more detail, m of x g of x ok so suppose I say degree of g of x equals some I do not know some l ok so let us let us say you compute this product this LCM you can do that right so bunch of polynomials you can find the LCMs ok in fact these polynomials LCM is very very easy to find how is what is the LCM of all these things remember they are all irreducible the only thing is they could be equal ok so you just look at the distinct polynomials in these things and multiply them together you get the LCM it is very easy there is no way one can divide the other right so they are all irreducible ok so you only have to look at the number of distinct polynomials here and multiply them together you get that LCM ok so the degree is quite easy to find suppose degree is L ok right remember this is a binary polynomial degree is L and I want m of x times g of x to have degree less than or equal to n minus 1 so what should m of x be any binary polynomial of degree n minus yeah, l minus 1, right? And these mi's belong to g of 2, ok? So I can take any binary polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus l minus 1, and then multiply with this degree l g of x, what will I get? I will get a code word of my binary BCH code. Okay, so how many code words are there in my binary BCH code? 2 power n minus, two power n minus l. Okay, so the number of code words equals 2 power n minus l. So that means dimension is n minus degree of g of x. Okay, so from here we conclude that the dimension of binary BCH code is n minus degree of g of x ok so I guess that is an important enough result so let me write it down separately so g of x equals lcm of m beta of x m beta square of x m beta power d minus 1 of x and then dimension equals minus degree of g of x ok alright so k, k, k is the typical notation for dimension so usually people also say the degree of the generator polynomial is n minus k ok so that is also a common way of thinking about it ok so for the specific case of the BCH parity check matrix finding the dimension is quite easy ok at least coming up with an algorithm for finding the dimension is not very hard Right, so you know all the all the zeros, so to speak. Okay, so 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 since this beta beta square beta per d minus one are zeros of every code word, they are also called the zeros of the code. Okay, so these are all just jargon. So if you want more jargon, beta beta square for example beta per d minus one called zeros of this code. Okay, code itself. The reason is are zeros are roots of every code word in the code, so they also call the zeros of the code itself. Okay, so you take. So once you know the zeros of the code, you find the minimal polynomials of the zeros, take their LCM, you get the generator polynomial. Once you get the generator polynomial, 
it's very very easy to find the code words they are all multiples of the generator polynomial well, b should be less than equal to n minus 1 so you do a simple count you see dimension becomes equal to n minus degree of okay so for the specific case of the bch code spiral check matrix finding the sub subfield sub code dimension is quite easy you can do it but in general it's not the same right so if you have a more general spiral check matrix you have to actually find the rank and all that but it's also easy not very hard but it's not so elegant and nice okay so having the code having the code being equal to multiples of a single polynomial is a very powerful and elegant idea and the fact that every code word every code word is characterized by roots okay every code word is characterized by roots is also a very elegant and powerful idea okay so these are all quite important and nice and and it's very useful as we go along okay so that's uh, uh, that's it so let's see some examples okay so what i'm going to do is pick n equals 15 and i'll take uh, beta in g of 16 okay incremental if i do that what's order of beta equal to n right so it's equal to 15 so i can pick it I can now define BCH codes of length 15 with beta as my basic uh, primitive element. Okay, so suppose I want b to be equal to 3. Okay, so 3 is some first one error correcting code, right? So I'll pick b equals 3. Then what are the zeros? Beta, beta squared, right? So what is the generator polynomial? It's the LCM of the minimal polynomial of beta and the minimal polynomial of beta square. Okay, beta and beta square are actually conjugates, right? So they will have the same minimal polynomial. And what is the minimal polynomial? Well, it depends on what I pick it to be. So let's say I pick it to be x bar four plus x plus one, which is equal to, like I said, LCM of minimal polynomial of beta and minimal polynomial of beta square. Okay. Both of them are equal to this thing. Okay, so. So to get a b equals 3 code with n equals 15, we can simply take all multiples of 1 plus x plus x power 4 of degree less than or equal to 14. Okay, take all possible polynomials and that will give you a degree, I mean it will give you a code with n equals 15. What is k? See degree of g of x is 4. So what is k? It will become 12. 11. 11. I thought it was a bit subtraction or something. So it is n minus degree of g of x. Because g of x is 4, so 15 minus 4 is 4. So 15, 11, 3, what does this code remind you of? It is the Hamming code. It's, in fact, it is equivalent to the Hamming code. Okay? So if you write down the parity check matrix for it, okay, suppose I write down the parity check matrix for it, what do I get? Okay, it seems like there are two rows. Right? The first row of 1 beta beta squared so on till beta bar 14. But remember the second row is completely dependent on the first row, right? So if I have C of X satisfying the first row, beta is a root of C of X, automatically what is guaranteed? Beta square is also a root. So the second equation is also satisfied. Second equation is redundant, I do not even have to write it. Okay. So only the first equation is there. Now if I replace each of these by a column vector of length 4, what will I get? I get the Hamming code, right? So how do you define the parity check matrix for a Hamming code? You take all 4 bit vectors, not a non zero, put them next to each other. How many of them are there? 15 of them. And here also you will get 15 distinct non zero 4 bit vectors. It is just to become in a different order depending on how you do it. It will not be in the 0, 1, 1 2, 3, 4 order. Okay, so it is equivalent to the equivalent to the 15, 11, 3 having code. Okay, so it is the same as that. Alright. So what about d equals 5? We will have 0 first, beta, beta square, beta bar 3, beta bar 4, right, the 4 zeros, and where is g of x? It is going to be the LCM of the minimal polynomial of these 4, but 3 of them have the same minimal polynomial. What are the 3? Beta, beta square, and beta bar 4. They have the same minimal polynomial, and that is say x bar 4 plus x plus 1. And then you have beta bar 3, which will have x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x square plus x plus 1. Okay, which way you construct. Okay. So here you have x power 4 plus x plus 
1 times x bar 4 plus x bar 3 plus x bar plus x bar 4. That is the LCM. So, what is k? 7, right. So, if you do the parity check matrix here, you will get the first row. The second row I do not have to write. I am right, same as the second row. Only the third row has to be written. B bar bar 3, B bar bar 3 square, B bar bar 3, the 14. I do not have to write the fourth row as well, right. Fourth row is already implied by the first or the second row, okay. So, it is enough, okay. So, this is, this is, the, this is the parity check matrix for the 15, 7, 5. Uh, so, okay. So, one more thing I have to say here. So, here I can say 15, 7. I do not know if the minimum distance is equal to 5. Okay, I can only say it is greater than or equal to 5. Right? Okay, I do not know if it is equal to 5. I know, I, I know it cannot be less than 5. I know it is greater than or equal to 5. In this case, it turns out minimum distance is equal to 5. That is a very quick way to prove it. How will I prove it? I have to produce a weight 5 code word. Okay. How do I produce a weight 5 code word? I try to do it. But one code word is already here. What is that one code word? GFX itself is one code word. Okay, think of code words as also polynomials. Right? So they are all multiples of GFX. So if you see the code word corresponding to GFX will have weight five. Okay, I think that is true. You can multiply this out and check it if you like. Okay, so you see the code word corresponding to this will have weight five. So you can erase this greater than or equal to and say that the minimum distance itself will be equal to five because I know that there is a code word of weight five. Is it okay? So this is for B equals five. Is that clear? Any questions? Something disturbing you? No? Okay, yes. Yeah. B equals? Oh, in the construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there you have B to be. So, so like I said, so, if, so okay, she's making a point that you don't have to go to D equals 3. Suppose I just say D equals 2, okay. I will get the same matrix. And the minimum distance is 3. Right? So, in that case, you are saying that the minimum distance, the bound is only greater than 2, greater than or equal to 2, and in that case, it is 3. Right? So, there are examples that you can do. Is that okay? Is it clear, right? So, this is this is how you proceed. So, let us proceed further and let us look at d equals 7. What happens here? The zeros are beta, beta square, beta bar 3, beta bar 4, beta bar 5, beta bar 6. Okay, and then what is G of X? Okay, so we look at LCM of the uh, this thing. So it's going to be X bar four plus X plus one, which is basically the minimal polynomial of beta of X times X bar four plus X bar three plus X square plus X plus one. This is the minimal polynomial of beta bar three of X. And then you have what? X square plus X plus one, which is the minimal polynomial of Beta plus five of x. Okay, so the degree is we have ten, so we have k equals five. Okay, so once again we have a fifteen five greater than or equal to seven. Well, in fact, I believe the minimum distance is equal to seven here, so that might need some proving. Okay, so of course we have to prove it. We have to come up with a polynomial so with a code word of weight uh, seven. Okay. Is that okay? So, the next thing would be say d equals 9 or so, from, but you will not get anything interesting here. So, if you go to d equals 9, what happens is, if you look at the zeros, you have beta all the way to beta power 8. Okay? And then if you look at g of x, you will have m beta of x, which is degree 4, times m beta power 3 of x, which is degree 4 again, then m beta power 5 of x, which is degree 2. And then you will have m beta plus 7 of x, which is again degree 4. So the degree becomes 4 k. Okay. So k becomes 1. Okay. So in fact, what you will get here is if you multiply all this out, what will you get? Let me see. Who knows this? If you multiply all this out, what will I get? It will be it's going to be x power 14 plus x power 13 plus x power 12 all the way to 1. Why is that? So this is the same as x power 15 plus 1 divided by x plus 1. Right? You know, x power 15 plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 times this. So, this is going to be x power 14 plus x power 13 plus so on to x power 1 plus 1. So, what is this code? It is the 15, 1, 15 repetition code. Okay. So, that is why we start. Okay. 
so you get the repetition code fine okay so that is all that we get for n equals 15 with this beta okay couple of other things i want to point out so in a way this hamming code is like is like the uh, how do i say it, it it's it, it's like the mother code okay the d equals 5 code is contained in the hamming code am i right the d equals 5 code is contained in the d equals 3 code is that correct right any code word of the d equals 5 code also satisfies the first code so it should belong to the d equals 3 code so the d equals 3 code is like the mother code okay? it contains every other subsequent higher minimum distance pch code okay so so it goes off in that way so it is like that like in for instance d equals 7 code is contained in the d equals 5 code it's also contained in the d equals 3 code. so you keep getting sub codes of larger and larger minimum distance in as you go large, longer and longer in that is another point to keep in mind so another way to prove that is you see that the gfx for d equals 3 will divide the gfx for d equals 5 okay, so if it is a multiple of gfx for d equals 5 it is also a multiple of gfx for d equals 3 okay, so that is another way to check that okay. all right so let us do one more example let me pick uh, some trace em let us say n equals uh, slightly larger so let us say let us pick 63, that is an, an interesting number. So, why am I picking n equals 63? Well, it is 64 minus 1 and I can find the element of order of 63 very easily, right? So, let me take, I will start with mg of 64, which is primitive. Okay? So, this alpha will play the role of my beta and the construction. Okay? So, suppose I am going to do d equals 1, and you have d equals 1 and so d equals 3. Okay. Again, you can you can look at the same uh, kind of arguments. So the zeros is going to be what beta beta squared. Okay, and then g of x is going to be simply equal to the minimal polynomial of beta of x. Okay, so I think I'm going back and forth between alpha beta. So let me just let me just pick up uh, beta here. I'm getting confused. Okay, so g of x is n beta of x. What will be the degree of g of x? Okay, it's going to be six. How do you how do you check whether it's six? You have to do the the, the cyclotomic corset modulo sixty three under multiplication by two. Okay, so you start with one. You go to two. You go to four. You go to eight. You go to sixteen. You go to thirty two, and you stop there. Okay, right? So that that, that gives you six. So remember you can find the degree of minimal polynomials without explicitly knowing what the polynomial is. Okay, that's just by finding the cyclotomic process length. Okay, so that's 6 here. So from there you get k to be equal to 63 minus 6, which is 57. Okay. So in this case also you will get the Hamming code. The Hamming code with n equals 63 with exactly minimum distance 3 in some other order. So you will have to get it, there's no problem there. If you go to b equals 5, likewise the zeros will be And g of x is going to be you can compute the degree of this guy that will also be 6. Okay. You can show degree of this is 6. This is also degree 6. Okay. So the degree of g of x is 6 plus 6 12 and k here will be 63 minus 12 which is 51. Okay. So, in general, there seems to be a theme that is developing here. Okay. So, it looks like, so let me tell you what the theme is. Suppose you define t to be d minus 1 by 2. Okay. So, I have d minus 1 zeros. It looks like I can do d minus 1 by 2. Okay. And then k will be, okay, let me put a question mark here. k is going to be n minus, so the degree of g of x is going to be t times n. What is this n? Right, that same m, and then k is going to be m minus m t. Okay, right. But we cannot claim that very easily. Okay, so there is a problem there, and you know you have to figure out the length of the cyclotomic process. Okay, so it may or may not be equal to m. The only thing we can say is degree of g of x is less than or equal to t m. That we can say for sure. So k will be greater than or equal to m minus m. 
So we can say that we can bound it very easily. There's no problem, but you cannot be sure that it will be equal. Okay. So what I want you to do is try this exercise now. Okay. What is the smallest value of b for n equals 63 for which this will be a strict inequality? Okay. So let me see. We we'll do a few more computations. What is the smallest value of b? Do you understand that? Okay. So b equals 3. We had equality here. Right. So this is equal to n minus. Uh, remember b equals 3 is c equals 1 okay 6 into 1 right this is equal to n minus 6 into 2 okay right so okay i want to see what happens for b equals 7 so b equals 7 is c equals 3 i think you will get still k to be 3 times 6 okay right if you find the minimal the fitted term equals to 5 Okay. What is five? Five, ten, twenty, thirty, eighty is what? Eighty is seventeen. Forty-four, sixty-eight is five. Okay, so this also is six. What about d equals nine? I have to check for seven, right? Am I right? So seven, what do you get? Fourteen, twenty-eight. Fifty six. Is it right? Fifty six. I mean, twelve. We did this last time, no? Thirty nine. Thirty five. Right? Okay. This is also six. Okay. So here again, k will be six to three minus four times six. That's okay. So let's do uh, b equals seven. Okay. B equals five. What do I have to check now? Nine, right? Nine. Okay, I think nine will be not so nice. Eighteen, thirty-six. That's it. Okay. So when you go to b equals eleven, you will get k to be sixty-three minus four times six minus three. Okay. So k will become strictly greater than the bound that you. Okay. So these are general results that you can prove. You look at this thing. In fact, there is a easy. There is a way to find that. Nine will be the first problem case. What happens so far? Why was nine a problem case? Think about it. Nine divided sixty-three. Okay, so that that is a that means nine can belong to some other smaller field. Once you go to some other smaller field, there is a problem. Okay, so you can you can you can determine this. So you can show that this will always happen. But yeah, seven could have caused the problem. Seven happened to be a good case. So seven was not a problem-causing device. Okay, the reason is seven does not quite belong to a field. I think. Seven divided sixty-three, but it is not. Uh, am I right or am I wrong? I think I'm wrong. So the other way around. Okay. So nine nine causes a problem. That is a good reason for that. Okay. Uh, so so you can prove this in general. In general, this will happen. Okay. For any n, for the first few b's, you'll always get n minus m p. Okay. That will always be the case. Now suddenly there will be a point where it will be larger. Okay. That's where the first uh, non-trivial uh, second order cost goes. Okay. So this is a useful exercise. You can try it. But for some n, for instance, if you pick n equals 127, okay, all of them will be n minus n. Why is that? Because all the cyclic atomic orbitals will have length 7. Because 127 is a prime number. Okay, nothing can divide it. Okay, 7 is also prime. So you have there's no problem. There's no there's no problem with that. Same thing happens with 32, for instance. 31 and 5 both are prime. So there's no way uh, anything like that. Okay, so so that's how it works. Okay, so n, n equals uh, 127. You'll always have k equals n minus 1. Okay, 70. Okay, this is it. So these are some simple computations you can do to find the degree. So one of the points I want to make here is, if you only want to find k, you don't have to do any finite field operation. Okay, the only thing you should know is. This is a good time to test the size computation, which is not really a finite field operation. It's simple numerical computation. You do that, you can find it. Okay. So, 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 so. Okay. So that's one point. The other point is, uh, so even though H has, we uh, have all these ones and ones, beta, beta squared, all the way to beta to b minus one. Okay. All the b minus one rows are not fully independent. Okay. Only about p equals. B minus one by two rows are usually 
independent. Okay, the usually is because there can be some weird things, but that won't happen in most cases. In most cases, you will have b minus one by two rows being linearly independent. What will those be? They will be the odd powers. It will be beta, beta power three, beta power five, beta power seven. All those things will usually be there. Only if you go to very small fields, you will have some trouble. Or when you go to very large t's, you will have some trouble with that. But usually, these rows will be linearly independent. Yes. Yeah, this is true. Uh, well, uh, oh, yeah, odd powers also d minus only two is true, except that it won't be the odd numbered ones. It will be something else. Okay, so this is usually true. <coughs> d minus one by two rows uh, being the okay. So, so usually what happens is when people write down parity check matrix for binary BCH code, they won't even write the even parts because they know the even powers are just implied by the odd powers. They only write the odd powers. Okay, so it's very common to just drop the odd even power zeros. And only mention the odd power zeros for the binary PC. Okay. So the next thing we're going to see is decoding. Okay. So that's at the heart of it. And uh, before that, I'll give you some examples, and then we will try to do decoding. Okay. Some more examples next week, and then after that, decoding. So stop here for now.